it seems like almost every pedal demonstration that we see on YouTube or the various places where we may get information about new pedals and gear is almost invariably played through a clean amp. Now, one thing that is rarely talked about and almost never a part of the consideration of many of the gear demos that I see is about pedal performance when you're dealing with a distorted or dirty amp or amp on the edge of breakup. So to really check out this idea of pedals that sound great into dirty amps, I'm gonna bring in my friend Danny Rabin from Marbin, and he has always been a big proponent of using gain and that being kind of the core sound that he has, always somewhat overdriven, and then using various pedals to kind of exaggerate and enhance the sound. So not only with Danny are we gonna identify a list of great pedals and maybe some of the derivatives that work really great into a, a dirty amp, but we're also going to give you kind of a framework or a context that you can then work from so that you can develop some pedal choices of your own along these lines that might be really great keepers for you and your rig. So let's bring in Danny and let's get started. I guess the first question is, is if somebody's out there that is either in your situation or are, you know, amp on the edge of breakup curious, what are the things that you would say are sort of the, the reasons why one might want to gravitate firstly to that sort of setup as, a, as opposed to the clean amp platform? And then just generally, what are the types of pedals that you look for that are good pairings with that? So for me, I saw this Scott Henderson reality video that Exotic produced a long time ago, and he was showing off his Bradshaw rig, which I think to this day was his best sounding rig. And I really based my idea of a lead tone on that as soon as I saw it. I used to play with twins and pedals in front of it, and there's always a harshness and an overemphasis on the attack of the notes when you're running your pedals into a clean amp. So to me, the, the way to do this is to have an amp on the, ed, on the edge of breakup and then run a pedal into it to just get all the compression and sustain you need and really build your sound on this soggier ground, less harsh, uh, and then add all of the time, time base effects in the effects loop of the amp. What are the kind of the fundamentals that you look for in pedals or the or maybe the the constant variables that you found that are consistent uh, and that work really well in front of these types of amps in your experience and then maybe we can go into some of them and hear what they actually bring to the table i would say that most boost type pedals work pretty okay uh in front of a dirty uh in front of a dirty amp but some of them are incredible for instance the rc booster we're going to talk about and your steel string are two of the best I've heard. And it's about maintaining all of the overtone information, adding that compression, and also on the pedal, having a sensitive enough EQ section to really dial in the mid range that you're trying to emphasize. I think that's the key. Now with hard clipping pedals, with pedals that have much more gain, you can get into some territories with pedals that sound great through clean amps that just don't work. Some pedals just do not have the right um, frequency response to, uh, to produce what's needed. So you already talked a little bit about one of the pedals that you use that Scott Henderson is also a, a famous user of, and of course many other artists, is the Exotic RC Booster. What are some of the things that stand out to you about what makes the RC Booster so great? The problem to me with cranking the gain on the dirty channel, I get to that hair territory before I get to that sustained territory uh, way too early unless the amp is just cranked. In most venues, you can't really do that, right? So the RC booster just adds that compression to where pretty much at any volume, you can get that amount of sustain you're looking for while maintaining all of the detail and information of your amp. Great. Well, let's hear what this actually sounds like in context. I'm going to turn it over to you, Danny, and you can uh, play us a little example of, of what you mean by some of the characteristics that we hear in the RC booster and really get a feel for what that sounds like through the Badger in sort of a dirty amp context.
So second pedal on the list, you said is a steel string. Now I have an MK1 version. I don't actually currently have a Mark II version in the studio like the one that you have. But what is it about mm. the steel string circuit? It's the same circuit, whether it's version one or version two. I think the only difference is we added a toggle to have a little bit more control over the bass. What is it that you love about the steel string? To me, the steel string and the RC uh, for this application on a clean amp, they're totally different beasts. They they do not do the same thing. But again, you when you're running it on through a dirty amp as a platform, you start getting into a different territory where things start acting very differently. Now, to me, the steel string is very similar to the RC booster, but it adds character. There's a sort of brightness and a specific way it carves the top end, especially the way I run it, which is with the filter very, very open. Uh, I don't really, I don't really use it to scoop a lot of frequency. So it's kind of a wide open pedal. And I feel like I'm really tickling that, like, you know, three to five K range. It's very alive. Things are very sparkly on top of that dirty sound, which is something I really, really like. Right. Well, let's, let's hear how this sounds in an actual context where we can hear the, the tickling of that three to five K. So that was steel string. Let's talk about another pedal now, Danny. What would you say is the third pedal on your list of great pedals that pair well with distorted or overdriven amps, dirty amps? Uh, Soul Driven by Exotic. Uh, I think it was Alan Hines uh, who was the inspiration for this. To me, that, that was the pedal that was on my rig right until the point that me and you met and you hipped me to your pedals uh, and it and, and uh, the ultraphonics took took its place it has this mid-range uh dial that is very very useful it's it's just a very very nice nice i'd say versatile pedal that could probably work with a lot of different kinds of amps i really want to hear what this sounds like in context with the with the badger because again i i, I do I do remember hearing this pedal and really loving it. Obviously, like Alan has like a really legato like style playing and it just plays so smooth. Um, but I really love to hear it in, in this gainier context because my feeling with him is that he usually plays more clean and then maybe uses distortion pedals and overdrive pedals. So it'll be interesting to hear, hear what you come up with. So let's, let's have a listen and then, uh, and then we can talk about it some more. I thought that sounded incredible. Um, obviously, th the 
whatever's going on with it, I, I'd say it sounds like some of the things that I love about tube screamers, but that can become too boxy. It seems to be able to address really well by however you've said mm -hmm. the mid range. Now we talked about the soul driven. We've talked about the steel string. We've talked about the RC booster. What is the next pedal in the lineup that we want to discuss as pedals that sound great with dirty amps? Well, we got to talk about the SD nine by Maxon, which is the, the Scott Henderson and Mike Landau pedal. Um, I mean, I know that it's sort of meant to be used sort of like a, like a rat, uh, in it's, in it's original design, uh, and it's the original utility. And, and anytime you buy one, you will be shocked by what that tone knob does. It, it, the tone knob needs to be almost completely shut for that pedal to be usable at all. It is so bright. Um, and it will freak out your amp, no doubt. But if you get it really in the zone, it becomes a powerful, magical tool. It's uh, It has so much gain in it. The color is right on. And the one thing that's really amazing about how that pedal behaves with single coil guitars is that you get enough fatness on your bridge pickup, which I would say is the biggest challenge, if there is ever a challenge with high gain, high gain sounds with strats, is to create a tone with your bridge pickup that's usable, that's thick enough. And this does just an incredible job. pedal of our group of five it's got to be none other than the ultraphonics overdrive now on your rig do you, are you using the the current version the mark ii version or are you using the mark one on your rig i'm using the mark ii mark ii um, so you have the yeah, same so, one in my hands here okay yeah and and i would say that the before the mark ii came around i was using the mark one obviously and uh and and i loved it but the new functionality of that pre-gain you put in was really, really useful for single coil users. Uh, and yeah, that became my number one uh, lead sound ever since I first laid hands on it. Beautiful. Well, I, I, wanna, I don't want to waste any time uh, talking about it. Let's hear how this thing sounds in context. thoughts, Danny, before we complete for today? Yeah, I would just say when you are trying to choose the rig for you, and let's say you're a shredding kind of guy, 
I would really, really start thinking about getting a channel switching amp and starting to get very familiar with dedicating about half your gain to come from the amp and the other half from the pedal, mm. as opposed to all of your gain from pedals into a very clean amp. It's just a different feel and a different sound. Well, if you enjoyed what you saw today, if you enjoyed all of those great playing examples from Danny and sort of the synthesis of some great pedals that work well into a high gain amp, I highly recommend that you like and you subscribe not only to our channel, but over on Danny's channel, we'll have that all linked in the description so that you can check that out. And I'll also pin a comment at the very top so you can check out more of the great stuff that Danny is doing. And until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, a.k.a. The Rig Doctor, with my friend Danny Rabin from Marbin. I'm going to have Danny play a little something to, uh, to complete us and play us out for the day. See you next time. <laughs>